In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create your first Google ad step-by-step step so you can start getting found in hours. And then a little later, I'm actually gonna show you my best pro tips that are gonna help you create a truly profitable, high-performing ad. Let's jump right into it. Okay, to get started, we're at ads.google.com and they just want you to sign into your Google account. You probably already have one. If not, you just click on start now and it'll walk you through the process of getting set up with an account, but that's the easy part. Um, so I'm just gonna click on sign in. And I've already got a few ad accounts here. If you already have one too, you just click on it. But assuming you don't have one yet, we're just gonna click on new Google Ads account. And it's gonna to wanna to take you through all these steps, all these questions of asking what you need. But in the case of today, we don't really need that because you've got me guiding you. So we're just gonna go down to switch to expert mode. Don't worry, it's not as hard as it sounds. You don't have to be an expert to do this. So here it's gonna ask you what your main goal is for the ad, right? Is it to get more sales, leads, web traffic, product brand consideration, brand awareness and reach, app promotion, local store visits and promotion. So a lot of people tend to do website traffic, especially when we're talking about just those Google search ads, which is probably what you're thinking about when you think of a Google ad. So I'm just gonna go ahead and choose this one, website traffic, and then under campaign type, there are a few different kinds of of campaigns we could run here. So one being the search campaign, meaning when someone goes to Google and they type in your business category, that's where you wanna show up for. So that's probably what almost all of you are thinking a Google ad to be, and that's what we're gonna do. But there's a few other options too. Some of these are unavailable based on what we chose here. It's basically gonna kind of guide you toward the right thing. So we're just gonna focus on search. I'm gonna click on that. And then here it's going to ask for your business's website. So I'm just gonna pop mine in here. Just westmcdowell.com. And we're gonna click on continue. Okay, so we wanna give this campaign a name. We can just keep it as is. I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. And then it's gonna ask you the networks that you wanna be found on. So search network is basically anywhere where people are doing a search. It's on Google. It's on a few of their partner websites as well. But at the end of the day, your listing would only show up here if someone's doing a search with the keywords that you wanna be found for. Display network is something else that's different. That's basically where you can show up just in random spots on, on their partner websites when they didn't even do a search for what you offer. I always uncheck this one, you don't wanna do that. So let's leave it just on search network. And now we get to choose our targeting. Like in other words, where do we want your ad to show? If you're a local business, you'd probably wanna target your local area. So anyone search, if you were a plumber in you know, a suburb of Detroit, for instance, you'd probably want to be found for the term plumber, plumber near me, and you'd probably only want to be found in a, you know, 20 mile radius of where your, your location is. But if you're more remote or you can work with people nationwide or even worldwide, if it's worldwide, you would just do all countries and territories. And that's always gonna be like the cheapest option to target worldwide. The more granular you get, you will notice that it's gonna be more and more expensive to target. But if that's your demographic, if that's who you actually do work with, it's worth to pay a little bit more to get people who are actually in your pool to work with. So in my case, I'm gonna do United States and Canada. I'm actually gonna do enter another location here and I'm gonna start typing in the countries that I actually do the most business with. So I'm gonna type in United States. I would then type in Canada. And basically these are countries who buy my, my paid product the most. We'll do Australia and we'll do United Kingdom. But it's worth mentioning here, you can do state by state. You can do like the state of Illinois. You can do zip codes. You can do cities. It's really pretty uh, wide open what you can target here. And then if you ever wanted to exclude someplace, like either a whole country or a state, like let's say you operate nationwide, but there's one state where you're legally, um, where it's illegally tricky for you to actually sell in that state, you could totally exclude that one. Another important thing to know here, it's kind of buried and people don't always talk about this, but under location options, this is important because what this is saying is, because you think you're targeting people who are in these countries, right? Not necessarily. Their default uh, choice here is presence or interest, which means people in regularly in or who, or who have shown interest in your targeted location. So that's not ideal. You probably want people who actually are in 
the country or the, the location that you're specifying. And if you have exclusions, you would want to do the same thing here. So, um, and then under languages, it already has English for me because I'm in the US. Um, depending on what country you're in, it may already have a, a different language selected there, but it definitely pays to um, keep it to the language of your ad itself. And now we're going to go down to budget and bidding. So what we're gonna set here is your average daily budget for this campaign. How much are you willing to spend on average per day? I'm not really gonna give you any rules here of what you should be putting in here. It's really gonna be dictated by your budget as a business, like what you can actually spend, as well as you're gonna start seeing as we go what kind of results you can expect at different price points. So you might wanna play around with the budget um, once you get a little bit more information, and you'll see what I'm talking about soon. It'll start to show you what they think it's gonna cost per click and how many clicks you're likely to get per day. So let's for now just put in, let's say 50 bucks a day. And then for bidding, I'm just gonna leave it on clicks and I'm not gonna set a maximum. Basically it's gonna use the maximized click bid strategy. So it's going to use their own AI, their own artificial intelligence to really maximize the campaign for you. And that's where I always like to start. And then you can get a little fancier later once you start seeing how things are actually performing. And here we have where, what are called ad extensions. So basically, you know how when you do a Google search and you there's ads that pop up, some of them have a bit more information in that ad. Some have additional links you can click. Like if you had, uh, you know, links for different services or for a pricing page, you could add those here. You can do call out extensions, which I believe are just extra benefits you can list or extra what we call call outs, right? In advertising, it's just any kind of message that you want to put in front of the viewer. So things like, you know, free delivery or 100% guarantee, you could put those kinds of things here if you wanted. And then call extensions. So if you wanted to add your phone number here, you could do that and then people could just tap right from the listing to call you. But I'm actually interested in a different kind of extension here. I want to show you for you local businesses, especially. I'm gonna click right here, and then I'm gonna click on location extensions. Click right here, create location extension. You actually need to have your Google business profile set up ahead of time, and then it's gonna to link to that. And what that would allow you to do is actually show up in the maps as an ad. So I'm, I'm trying my hardest to find one as an example right now, and I can't find one under any category, but basically it would show up here and it would just say ad right next to it. And it's a great place to show up because it looks very much like a normal listing. It's a tiny little designation that says ads. So I highly recommend uh, setting this one up. I'm just gonna click on cancel for now and then save and continue. Okay, so now we get to our ad group level. So think of this kind of like nesting dolls, like those Russian nesting dolls, right? So you have ads on the, the smallest level, then multiple ads can go into one ad group and then multiple ad groups can go into one campaign. So you can give it a name, and generally you're gonna to wanna to name this something to do with the keywords, because this is the place where we decide on all the keywords that you actually do wanna be found for for this ad. In our case, what I wanna create an ad for is my lead magnet, my masterclass training showing people how to create their own website. So I'm gonna be targeting keyword phrases along those lines of how to make a website, how to make a website for your business, that kind of thing. So I will type that in here. Okay, so I just called it how to make a website keywords. And Google does have what they call the keyword planner tool. Unfortunately, I don't know why they don't give you access to that right here or right now at this stage, but you have to kind of put in your own keywords and then later once it's running, you can go find that. But yeah, I don't know why they don't do that. What we need to do first then is just kind of come up with our best guesses, our best ideas of what we think we want to be found for. So. I'll just start really easy with something like how to make a website. And I do wanna show you a few things here. So this is, okay, if you look down here, if you just type in a phrase, that's broad match. How to make a website is very broad. If people type in any variation of this or anything even closely, even close to this, and by the way, it's not always gonna be that close. So I highly recommend pretty much leaving broad match keywords out of your strategy. You're just gonna get found for some things that you would never expect to be found for, which is never good. So, but you can start seeing that things are happening over here as we add in keywords. So it's saying, it's predicting for 50 bucks a day, I'd get about 22 clicks on this per day at an average cost per click of 229. And as we add new things here, 
this is gonna change and reflect their new prediction. So let's just see what happens if I put quotations around it, phrase match. So all of these words basically have to be in a search for that to happen. So now that's gone down to 13 clicks a day for an average cost per click of 377. So it's gone up. Now let's do another version with brackets, which makes this an exact match, meaning people have to type this in exactly in order to be found. I'm gonna do a few more um, exact matches just to see where that leaves us. So I've got all these variations and these are all exact matches. So people have to type these in exactly like this. And now it's showing I would get 17 clicks a day for just under three bucks a click. And it lets you play with this little slider to show if you were to up your bid a little bit to go a little bit more in every day. It'll show you your new, uh, it'll say your new budget and then you'd get an estimated two additional clicks per day or five more clicks per day at 75 bucks. So, and then of course they make that easy to apply because they want you to spend more money, right? So, uh, but I'm just gonna put it back to where we had it. But ideally you wanna have probably at least 20 keyword phrases here. And when they're in the same ad group, I do highly recommend keeping them very much of the same kind of search intent. Like these are all to do with how to make a website yourself. I wouldn't wanna start adding things like, you know, hiring a web designer or anything like that, because then the ad wouldn't make sense with that phrase. So keep them all closely related. If you have a different kind of angle that you'd want to hit on, that would probably be a good case to make a new ad group at that point for those new sets of keywords. All right, so I'm just gonna click on save and continue. Okay, so now we're on step three and here's where we get to actually create the ads themselves. So first of all, wanna make sure that we're not sending people to the wrong place. So I did put my, uh, my web address in here, but I don't wanna send people to the homepage. Remember, I'm trying to send them to that masterclass opt-in. In your case, it might be a service page for something specific. Just gonna make sure we're doing the right thing. It's westmcdowell.com slash training, and that's where I wanna send people. And I like the display path to be pretty clean. I wouldn't wanna add that in here. That's just what's, what's gonna be shown right here. So I could put that here if I wanted to. Um, you just don't want it to be, you don't want it to clutter up your ad, you know? Now it's gonna ask you to create a bunch of different headlines. And this is a little confusing, right? So you would think that it's just gonna possibly rotate between all these headlines individually, not always the case. Sometimes they'll do one at a time, but look here, they can do like three headlines all together. Cause this is, I'm gonna zoom in real quick here so you can get a better look at this. This preview shows potential ads assembled using your assets. Not all combos are shown. They can be shown in any order. So make sure they make sense individually or in combination and don't violate policies, of course. So let's go ahead and start adding in some new headlines. Now, what I like to do here is think of your different headlines as different hooks or different um, you know, angles you could come at it from. So for instance, for the training masterclass that I'm trying to advertise here, there's a lot of things I could talk about. I could talk about how it automates uh, client generation. Failed making a website before, but this is easier. Or it could be that it's free. Okay, so I put in things like how to make your own website, automate client generation, watch it on demand, 100% free, get the website you want, you can do it yourself. So see how, I, how I've hit on all these different things that might interest different people. And now you don't have to fill in all these either, but I would recommend at least doing three. And once you've got that, we're gonna go down and do the description. And it's basically pulled in something from my website, so we're just gonna delete that and get started from scratch. And again, we wanna really hit on benefits. We wanna make this really enticing and clickable because most businesses totally drop the ball on this and they just talk about the logistics, the cities they're in, the, you know, the just the facts approach which doesn't really ever get anybody clicking. So let's see how many benefits we can really hit on in our description.
and they do limit you here to 90 characters. So again, this isn't gonna be writing a whole one long description. This is gonna be similar to what we did with the titles, which is we're gonna create multiples that they're going to kind of assemble together, you know, in the winning combination. So I've created the first one that says the ultimate free plan to flawlessly create and launch your own website step by step. And I'll add a few more here as well. Okay, so I've added, you'll walk away with a website easily worth $10,000 in client generation to your business, automatically attract and convert two to three times more visitors into paying clients. So each of these really kind of hits on its own hook as well. And that's the key here to these ads that convert. Because at the end of the day, different messages, different marketing messages, different hooks appeal to different kinds of people. And Google's really smart. So they're gonna start to figure out over time which hook and which title, which description, which combination of these things is gonna to appeal to which types of people. So from there, I'm going to click on save and continue. And now you're just gonna put in your payment info. And I don't know when you're gonna see this, but right now they have a promotion of receiving 500 bucks when you spend 500 to spend on ads. And that's a pretty good credit. So hopefully that's still available as you're doing this. And once you set up all your billing info, you're just gonna click on submit. It's gonna take about an hour for your ads to be approved, but then you're officially up and running. But I do wanna stress that just knowing how to go in and set up a Google ad isn't enough to be profitable. So if you click this video here, I'm gonna show you seven of my best money-saving, profit-boosting optimization tips that are gonna help your ads take off in a really big way. So click here, I'll show you what I'm talking about, and together we're gonna make your ads really work for you.